Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. I'm going to go through some quick things today um, just about uh, blood glucose regulation and how this relates to type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. So let's get straight into it. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about some key organs that are important when looking at the regulation of blood glucose. So the first organ to start with is the small intestine. This sits in the middle of the abdomen. It's where your food is broken down and absorbed into the bloodstream as glucose. So anytime you eat carbohydrates, this is where it's absorbed into the bloodstream. The next important organ to be aware of is the pancreas. The pancreas produces insulin in the beta cells and it produces glucagon in the alpha cells. Okay, the next organ is the liver. Now the liver is important because it stores glucose so when there's plenty of glucose around it can store it as glycogen and it can also produce glucose in a process called gluconeogenesis which converts things like amino acids into glucose. The final organ is the muscles of the body. This is where glucose is absorbed, um, stored as glycogen and can be used at a later time when more glucose is needed. So there's a quick overview of the important organs that are involved in glucose metabolism. Next I want to give a bit of a graphical representation of how these organs affect the blood glucose level. So here we've got a diagram. Along the bottom you can see this is supposed to represent a blood vessel and then this inside is the bloodstream and these little blue hexagons represent glucose molecules. So here, for example, this is just a nice, ordinary level of glucose in the blood. The body's very happy with this level. So let's take a typical scenario where a person eats a large bowl of rice. That rice enters their digestive system into the small intestines, is broken down into glucose and absorbed into the bloodstream. Okay, so now we have, as a reaction to all of that new glucose, a rise in blood sugar levels. So what happens now? Well, the pancreas senses this rise in blood glucose level and it produces a hormone called insulin. Now what this hormone insulin does is it targets the liver and it targets the muscles and it tells them to absorb glucose from the blood into the liver and muscles and store it as something called glycogen and this is a storage molecule for the glucose so as a result of this action the blood sugar level drops back down to normal and everybody's happy so let's take an opposite scenario let's imagine that the blood glucose level is low now this might be because of increased uh, demand for glucose by the body, let's say during exercise or during periods of intense uh, thought processes where the brain is using a lot of glucose. Now what happens here is, is the brain senses that the blood glucose is low and it might trigger a hunger response, which means that more food will be enter into the small intestine and absorbed as glucose. The other thing that will happen is the pancreas will sense this low glucose and it will produce another hormone called glucagon. And what this glucagon does is it targets the liver and it targets the muscles. And from both of these, it does the opposite effect of the insulin. It causes glycogen to convert into glucose. It also tells the liver to produce new glucose and this is a process called gluconeogenesis. So this means new glucose being made and this is where glucose is made from either proteins um, or other chemicals. So what happens if you have a situation of diabetes? Well there's two types of diabetes. First we'll talk about type 1 diabetes and that's quite s simple to explain. Essentially it's where the pancreas stops being able to produce insulin. So as the blood glucose 
rises to a level of high blood glucose, the pancreas can't signal to the liver or muscles to use that glucose. So the blood glucose remains high. And if the small intestine keeps piling in more and more and more glucose, this never gets depleted and the person gets in a state of severe hyperglycemia. And as a result, several other things happen. You end up with a situation of diabetic ketoacidosis and ultimately uh, is not compatible with life. So the only treatment for type 1 diabetes is to replace that insulin uh, with a subcutaneous injection of synthetic insulin. So that's type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is where you have this chronic hyperglycemia from a life of uh, high intake of um, carbohydrates. And what this causes is resistance in the liver and the muscles to the insulin. So what you need is, so insulin's trying to tell the liver and muscles to take up this glucose, but because they're so used to this signal, they're so used to the insulin, that they become very resistant and you need more and more and more insulin to give the same effect, okay? So essentially the pancreas produces tons of insulin uh, and the liver and muscles respond less and less to this signal. And ultimately what happens is that the pancreas wears itself out. And so instead of being a high level of insulin, the pancreas stops being able to produce as much insulin and you end up with the situation of low insulin in the end stages of type 2 diabetes with a chronically high level of glucose. So that's the situation of we've been through how insulin is con how blood glucose levels are controlled. We've been through um, what happens in type 1 and been through what happens in type 2 diabetes. And this video is really in preparation for more videos that are yet to come about the different types of treatments for type 2 diabetes. So keep an eye out for those. If you like this video, please check out the website at zerodefinals.com. Why not subscribe on the YouTube channel and check out some of the other videos? So I'll see you next time.